hello everyone. This is our chat for change number 14. I'm Caro from Musicians for Solidarity. And uh, today I have the honor to talk to Jose Angel Salazar Marin. He's the artistic director of El Sistema Greece. Hi Jose, thank you very much for being here today. Look, I don't know, it's a, totally a pleasure for, for me just to be invited and to know about your initiative and what you're doing, which I think is great. So it's just an honor for me to be here. <laughs> great. Yeah, and before we go deeper into the material, uh, as I know you, you grew up in Venezuela um, and there El Sistema itself was born. And maybe for everyone to know, um, could you quickly describe what El Sistema is and what it is about? Yeah, well, basically, uh, El Sistema in Venezuela, it's very, it's very hard for me to describe how it is because it's so into my life and it's the way I grew up that I see it as something very natural. But basically what El Sistema is, it's a musical project, an education project that provides access to music education and uses the methodology of playing in ensembles and in groups as mean of social integration, but also as mean of education in values that could be translated um, into, you know, the life uh, experiences and, and these values that you can take for the rest of your life. And we do this using music as a tool, but also this is one of the purposes, but the other purpose is also to provide access to music education of high quality um, and prepare you as a musician of high you know, level. Uh, so you of course get all the social background, but also you get high quality of music education so that if you want to pursue a career in music, you can do it. And also a system offers a lot of um, career opportunities and development as well, uh, personally. So, I mean, it's very, in Venezuela, it's very big. Um, and it's a way that we, I mean, um, it has 40, it started in 1975. I'm not good with counting, I think 46 years old. Um, so it's just a way that in, in which we all grew up yeah towards yeah. music let's say <laughs> yeah that's that's very interesting and as you said you you grew up in that system so could you maybe tell us a little bit about your your background and how you got to music and when you started playing instruments and everything <laughs> um well my background as uh, education i studied conducting and violin and in the system i started as a, as a violin player and then i started conducting and then I was a conductor of a youth orchestra. And um, I mean, this is, let's say, my, my background. I started, I got to music in my family. There were no, no musicians. Uh, and this is one of the beauties of El Sistema that, I mean, it's there for you. And I had this curiosity because there were some friends in school that were playing violin. And my father just told me, OK, if you are interested, I was like six years old. If you are interested, we can go and ask to see how are the lessons and how much we have to pay and all of that. And then when we got there, it was uh, something for everyone, for free, um, and just open doors. Um, and this is how I, I came into our Sistema. And I started studying conducting because I went to a concert when I was very little. and. Um, I had this image of the conductor in my mind so amazing. This person who was conveying all the instruments and, you know, just managing, let's say, and coaching people into what was an amazing result, musically speaking, but also in terms of energy. And I still, I mean, I was very little, but I still remember this concert and, and, and the, the image is very, it's very vivid in my mind. And... I always kept this and crazy as it sounds in Venezuela, the opportunities to conduct are, are, are a lot because we have more orchestras than conductors. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was 11 years old, I, I got the baton in one rehearsal to conduct for fun with my friends. And then the, my, con my teacher in the orchestra said, oh, I mean, you, you are good with this. If you want, I can help you. And this is how it started being serious for me when I was 11 years old to, to try to conduct more concerts and, and then studying formally, of course. Um, and then um, I started traveling 
to support educational programs that are model of a system. And this is another thing that it's provided, let's say, in connection with the system in Venezuela, is that you get these opportunities to, to travel and help other programs, to help to, to learn from what these programs are doing and also try to go and you know spread what you do, let's say. And because of these opportunities, I started traveling um, abroad and I started working more into educational uh, programs uh, that are like programs with a methodology of a sistema, but more directed to a social to a social cause, with the same goal of providing music uh, education of high quality. And that is how I uh, I got appointed as artistic director of, of El Sistema Gris, which is a program that um, shares the same methodology, but we adapt it to the reality in Greece, let's say. Okay, and what does it mean you adapted to the reality there? Um, well, this is it's uh, um, another good thing of, of the El Sistema methodology is that it addresses a cause and it's very adaptable and flexible depending on the cause that you, that you have. So, for example, in Venezuela, if I am not mistaken, because I didn't leave this, but I think one of the biggest crises was about, for example, like social classes and a lot of poverty and maybe people with no access or no means to, to education. And the STEMA was uh, an open door uh, to this world that was not accessible. Um, for example, here in, in, in Greece, we have the, one of the biggest situations is the refugee crisis. And with El Sistema, we try to um, provide this social integration and this as a tool for children to uh, continue developing themselves, uh, no matter where they come from. Also, we really try to provide real inclusion, meaning that, for example, we have an orchestra where we have kids that are coming from refugee camps or kids that are coming from refugee accommodations or migrants or kids that are coming from conservatoire, kids that are coming from normal, I don't like the word normal, but normal school and uh, normal circumstances, let's say. And the idea is to think that everybody, no matter where you come from, you, you're just a person who has the same desires and the same you know, ambitions. and we are we are here for you um, and this was for example the cause in which we adapted el sistema why do we say we adapted because we need to we needed to change maybe some of the goals uh, we needed to change some of the activities to provide the kids with things that maybe they need uh, specifically and but then we direct them towards the same goal which is just i mean playing music of high quality and being better, being better citizens. That's the. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a very very nice, <laughs> nice goal. Um, I was wondering, do you do you like go to schools, go to refugee camps, and um, tell children about the about the project, or do they just come? So, how how is it? Does it work? Well, the Sistema Gris is uh, it's quite young, let's say. I think it started in 2017. I arrived here in 2018. And um, every year, of course, is different. Now with the pandemic, of course, a lot of things have changed. And we are kind of re-studying uh, what we are doing and how yeah. we are doing it <laughs> and adapting. <laughs> But, um, you know, we work in in different centers. So we have one center that is our own center, let's say. It's a, it's where we have our offices and, and some classrooms where we have our classes in one neighborhood that is very interested. I, I live in this neighborhood as well, and it's really multicultural. Like you have families here that are Greek families, but also you have families that, um, you know, are second or third generation migrants, or then you have families that are just arriving like myself, Or you have um, refugees as well and, and 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 migrants. So it's very interesting to, to be in this neighborhood because our nucleo, as we call it, it's a, it's really an image of the society we are living uh, and this neighborhood. 
Um, <laughs> then we work also in a center, a community center from the Greek uh, Orthodox Church uh, that they give, they give us their, their spaces and we collaborate with them. They do classes like they do art and craft, they do cooking classes for kids, and we go there to give the music lessons, let's say, and the orchestra. And then we also work in refugee camps. It has been difficult because of the coronavirus and because of a lot of changes in legislations and movement of migrants and all of this. But we, we I mean, we're still, you know, really, into trying to go there and help. And uh, uh, we work in then in refugee camps. We work in another city as well, in uh, Corinthos, because this, sorry, this all of these things I've said first are in Athens. We work in another city. Uh, Corinthos is like one hour and a half uh, from Athens. And in Corinthos, we work in collaboration with a conservatoire. They give, they give us their spaces and we go and, and provide the group lessons. Um, we work in another refugee camp in the, in the in Corinthos as well. The, but because of the legislation, we need to, these kids are coming outside of the camp to the conservatoire, which is great also for integration, you know. And, um, and then Back in Athens, we work with organizations that are working with refugee and minors or, um, you know, unaccompanied minors. So in these shelters, maybe we, we go there to, to give some lessons or the kids are coming to our lessons. Um, and we have the youth orchestra, which is like, a, I, call, I call it, it's like a separate project. Our students are going there, but at the same time, we, it's an open orchestra. So everybody's coming from everywhere in this orchestra and we are rehearsing in one private school that they are also uh, supporting us and they are giving us all the, the spaces to, to have the rehearsals and the sectionals and all of that. Um, yes, this is, this is more or less the academic structure in regards to where we, where we work and we give classes of music instruments, orchestral instruments, choir, uh, music initiation, and music theory, and orchestra practice. Okay, and just for me to understand, so there are the nucleus that are the smaller circles or the like one city or one part of the system, and then there is the bigger structure. And um, I think, is it in Venezuela like that, that there's the, the, the national orchestra and people from the nucleus who are like advanced enough, they can play in the in the bigger orchestra. Is it like is, it's not uh, exactly the same in Greece as you um, just read? Yeah, it's not exactly the same uh, because in Venezuela the structure is really, really, really developed and really, yeah. you know, really a huge structure. But the thinking is the same. Um, I always describe this as a as a triangle, like you are going from the base to the, to the top of the triangle. And in the base, you have, of course, all the different nucleus in the different regions and you have all the different programs. And then it's like you're always going up a ladder. Like you, you start in your, in your school with your, uh, with your music initiation, then you go to an instrument, you are in the children orchestra of this school, then you go to the youth orchestra of this school, and then you go to the youth orchestra of the region. And then if you want to continue, you go to the conservatoire and you go to one of the national orchestras. And then, I mean, you can always go up, up and up. We try to do the same. Uh, we try to, to have our nucleus. We, we take it from Venezuela as inspiration, but actually we don't, um, if we parallel to Venezuela, which is impossible, um, we have like small modules, like they call in Venezuela. We have like small modules and all together they work as a nucleus. So in these, small, in these small modules, we have instruments, choir and orchestra, small ensemble. Then the idea is that they fusion three times a year or two times a year for a concert, and then they become something, something bigger. So it's like, we keep this structure and we try to, from the beginning, have the kids being prepared to go to this ultimate stage. And of course, one of our goals is, I mean, we have the same two, two goals. One is the social goal, which is 
integration, which is inclusion, but also as important is the music quality, the quality of music education goal, let's say, where we want to prepare our students to be able to, if they want, if they, if they want to do it, to be able to go and apply in a music school or to be able to go to a conservatoire to continue their, stu their studies. And this is our other goal to try just to be this door to music and to this marvelous world of music. Yeah, oh, that's that's very very beautiful. Um, how so? Do all of the children have the same program of like lessons, and do all of them attend all all like choir or instrumental lessons, or is it different? And they can choose what they want to do and how much time they want to invest. It depends on the, of course, where we are working, but in general. Um, if they are from five to seven years old, we suggest they go to music initiation, uh, which is a class where they will eventually, I mean, it's introduction to music, let's say, but also they will learn the basics on instruments and then prepare to go to either instrument and they sing. So if, if they want to go to choir, they already have this experience, let's say. Uh, then in the second stage, which is the classes, whether instrument or choir, we give the, we make the, the children make a decision whether they want to go to instrument. And then if they go to an instrument lesson, they have to attend one hour instrument lesson in group, one hour of theory and one hour of uh, one hour and a half of orchestral practice. Uh, and then If they go to the choir, they have to attend two classes of one hour and a half, which are music theory and singing. Uh, and then in the, let's say the higher stage is we have kids that are going to the youth orchestra with rehearses uh, three hours per week. And then we have kids that are going to the youth choir that they also rehearse um, three hours per week, I think as well. So all of this, of course, it's the first level music initiation, second level, either instrument and children orchestra or co children choir, and then youth orchestra, youth choir, let's say. Of course, in, sorry, it's very important to mention as well that in the theory lessons, the students are prepared um, not only to take, of course, a pencil and paper and, you know, and write their, their notes and, and, you know, Uh, intervals and all of that, but the, we try the music theory lessons to be uh, more physical, like using eurythmics and these kind of methods. Also, we try to combine the music theory with what they are playing in their instruments so that they are also reading and understanding what they are, what they are playing in their instrument classes. And then uh, the music theory For us, it's also very important that they learn solfege and how to how to sing. It's uh, it has been uh, incredible for us to understand how important it is for a musician to sing and even songs they do sometimes in music theory, because um, of course, in terms of budget, we cannot provide them with all the classes that we would like and have them in all the choir lessons as well. But we do it in theory then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I think it would have been good for my education as well. Um, I had a question. One second. <laughs> um, I read uh, about uh, El Sistema in Venezuela a lot and the the main or uh, one of the goals is also that in the end when Sistema exists for a lot of years, then all of the teachers or almost all of the teachers also come from, from the system, right? So everyone already knows and can take responsibility and knows how, how it works. That's right, like that? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. definitely. Okay, yeah, I, I think that that is so, um, yeah, it also makes a lot of sense. And do also older kids already help younger kids? in uh, ensembles or um well yeah i mean one of the it's a very nice nice question because 
one of the things that are also within El Sistema is that, um, and I, I mean this uh, as coming from Venezuela, everything you learn and everything you receive, you give. Just, I mean, it could be right away. I remember many times when I was little, um, I was trying to play something and I couldn't, and I have help from older students that were just around and they saw me and they say, do you want me to you know, help you with this? And it was a very open you know, environment. Um, and of course, we try to do the same. Uh, we try to not push, but you know, really encourage the students that if they have a problem and they want to solve it within them, their group, uh, they can do it. And also we provide them with spaces to do it most of the time as well. We create these opportunities where they can collaborate and try to fix something together. Um, this is one thing. The second thing is about the teachers. Uh, in Venezuela, yes, it has been so long and for so many years that almost all of the teachers, if not all, they have come through this process and they have been now, they have gone to pursue education and they have come back now with the knowledge to support and enhance what they have been doing. Um, in Greece, of course, because we're a new project, uh, we work with Greek uh, teachers totally uh, that are coming from various backgrounds as well. And we are just, I mean, for me as artistic director is to understand um, their mentality and their values and to see if, they, if these values correlate to what we want as a team. And then when this is happening, of course, it's difficult for somebody who is not used to group lessons then to start teaching a group lesson uh, yeah. right away. But we help. Like I, I would be following up with this person and our pedagogical coordinator will also be in touch with this person and, and will support. So we try that the team is also, the, the teaching team is also very collaborative and, and supporting one another. And then the third thing is that we have a program that is called a Young Leaders Program. And uh, we started one year ago. Uh, Francis Galliardi is the person in charge of this program and developing it and, and designing it. Mm -hmm. And um, this program is trying to give a frame uh, to this helping and supporting. So, for example, if we want students to help and support, we want them to do it properly. So what we try to do with this program is to give them the space and the education and the tools and the information that they need to do this support that they want um, to do it properly. And we don't want to impose anything on the students. This is the other thing. Like we don't want to say, okay, you help me with this kid or you help me with this task or in the Young Leaders Program, she's trying to have every one of the participants discover in what things they want to help, in what things they want to support. And then how they can support, um, which, which has been great because it has really put the, the students on the driver's seat of this journey. And um, I think that sometimes they understand, not sometimes, almost all of the times, they understand better mm -hmm. uh, what they want, what are their needs and how they can address these needs and how we can help them to, to address these needs. So, um, the Young Leaders Program is something very new, something that it's, it's just starting and we are, of course, measuring it and, you know, trying to adapt it and everything. But it's a really, really nice program because the idea basically is to put the seed in these young students that in the future will become maybe the next teachers or whether they go to any profession, they will carry this experience for their lives and will enable them to to have these opportunities and this wide uh, vision, let's say, of things. Yes, yes. And can you, do you have maybe an example what what they then start doing uh, if they yeah. are in this program? Yes, uh, for example, we, as an educational program, the Sistema Greece works in different areas. Of course, it's easy to say we're in a Sistema program, you do concerts, you have orchestra and lessons. This is the first thing that comes to your mind, but also when you work on a, on a, on a music education program, 
you realize that there are many areas that are behind the scene that are really, 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 you know, uh, crucial for our activities. So these areas being the management of the project, the management of the administra administrative part, there is the communicational part, which is also very important, and not only communication in social media and all of this, but also communication with the partner, with the organizations, with all of this. And there is the educational part that is about planning or artistic planning or the repertoire of the years of the concert that we're going to do. There is the production part, which is also very important. We will go to a concert. How many chairs do we need? How do we do a stage plan? And um, how do we do a set list for this concert? Um, there are all of these things. So what we try to do is to, you, you have a kid, let's say Caro comes to this program and uh, Caro thinks that we only do music lessons, but suddenly Caro realizes that there is this whole world of a lot of different things that we are doing at the same time. And we are saying, you know, Caro, you have all of these things. What is more appealing for you? Maybe it's not the lessons. Maybe you want to help in the production or maybe you want to improve this communication you let's say you decide where you want to go and then we try to invite people that will coach you or that will work with you and you will work with this person to improve something or develop something during this year the idea is that the students after they know what we do they give ideas for improvement and then they develop their own projects and then at the end of the year when we evaluate these projects we let's say we adopt these practices as practices of the organization, meaning that our practices are coming from the students, uh, which I think it's the most marvelous thing. Yeah, it sounds it sounds incredible. <laughs> I think I would have been very happy <laughs> if I was a kid in your in your uh, program. <laughs> it's very great. And um, as you said in the beginning, the children are coming from very different backgrounds. Um, do you have the feeling that the mixture of all of them, like, um, does it does it work? And does the integration and a mix of different different um, social backgrounds does it work? Yes, it, it definitely works. Also, uh, we need to think that in music, of course, music is a language by itself. I know this. What I said is just very cliche, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we need non-verbal communication most of the times. And when we are playing in group, it's about a group achieving a goal. So all of these set some parameters that make it a bit easier to put together people and play. Uh, of course, and I, I want to be very careful with this, of course, we are not, we are not going to change the world or the situation. For example, we are not going to say, I, I personally don't say we will end racism or we will end, you know, differences in classes or we will end. It's not possible for us as an organization to do that. But what we do is contribute to these problems. What we do is to do our part in what we believe that it's, it's good and in the fight against this thing that we don't believe in. And... Um, and then we have seen marvelous results and it takes time, of course. You plant the seed and you, you, know, you nurture it and you leave a little bit of sun to make this plant grow. And we have seen over the years how these things improve, how kids get better along with, them, with, with themselves. We have had situations where we have different cultures that in real life, maybe they don't get along or they have you know, these conflicts. And in the classroom, students from these two different cultures, they get along very well and they collaborate and they play together and they help each other. So I think it's just about building bridges. It's just about build, building these bridges. Um, of course, again, I don't want to, to be, you know, to think that because in the classroom they collaborate, then in real life they will, they will uh, I don't know. But definitely when they grow up, I want to believe that they grow up with a different mentality. And this mentality, I hope that stays with them and really makes a change in the future generations. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, for sure. It's the it's a good step in the right direction. I'm sure that it it yeah it affects them a lot <laughs> in the future. Um, we we've been talking a lot about the project and everything, uh, but I didn't ask you what what exactly you're doing in your in your job or what is your daily life looking like in in that project. Well, you know my my role the role of a of an artistic director in a music education program, I think it's very abstract to define like in a, with a job description, like you have to do this, this and this, and you will work from this hour to this hour. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, and it, ha it, it also as an organization that started and was growing at the moment that I arrived, um, it, it was about discovering what were the needs that I needed to cover as well in the process. So nowadays what I do, maybe next year it will change, but nowadays what I do is I work with the teachers um, to plan the repertoire uh, of the year, of the lessons, to plan the curriculum of, of the lessons so that I have an overview and we are, let's say, all going in the same direction with, with the instrument classes uh, and also with the orchestra conductors um I conduct the youth orchestra myself. So I also have, let's say, the overview of the planning of the youth orchestra, the repertoire and, and the functioning of the of the youth orchestra. I do a little bit of arranging as I think every conductor in this kind of program does. Um, for 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 the project in general and for the future projects that might might come. Um, and then also what I try to do is to work and in partnership with other programs as well. We are part, as an organization, we are part of different networks uh, of like, for example, the Sistema Europe, or there is also the Academy of Impact Through Music, which is something we also participate in. And it's like this network where we have a lot of programs coexisting with the same problems, with the same needs, but also with particular things. And I am also working on building these synergies between, between projects and exploring where what things we can do together, what material we can exchange. Um, yes, it's a little bit of, of everything. Um, this, this is basically, I think, my role and a little bit of, as well, a little bit of uh, teaching whenever needed. Yeah, that's that's very nice. And um, how do you, uh, how's the financial support working of the whole project? So is it, is it by, is there a Greek uh, government um, support or is it all, do you have to fund? Um, by a, a, or private sponsors, or how does it work? Um, the, well, the funding for for this project is a it's a bit difficult. I have to admit, mm -hmm. uh, we are very very lucky and very fortunate to have the Hilti Foundation that supports uh, our program, and there is another uh, organization that likes to to remain anonymous that they are really supporting uh, our daily, let's say. Um, operation um, and then also we are always applying for different grants so there is the Altamane Foundation for example that is also is based in Switzerland and it's also giving funds for specific projects um, we are starting in the world of European um, you know creative desk and European uh, Union uh, applications as well so we have partnered, for example, with the Vienna Voice Choir for a project uh, of teacher training and, and repertoire development uh, that is called Songs for Europe. And from this project, we received some funds as well uh, for this specific project, I mean, for the, for the running and, and the development of you know, uh, this specific project. Uh, but, but always, you know, year after year, I'm sure, it's not my area, I don't work with funding, but I'm sure that uh, the, our co-founders, I mean, the board of El Sistema and 
the general manager are always you know open eyes and ears <laughs> to to see where we can get some money from and continue you know ensuring the sustainability of the program which is i think always a priority yeah yeah and a work that has been done year after year i <laughs> i can imagine yeah yeah great um I I <laughs> I sometimes wish I would have grown up in in or have would have had my musical education in a in a Systema project. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, how you see it, but I mean, yeah, you you don't know the different uh, education educational options, maybe. But would you would you also say it's uh, it's like the most holistic maybe way of uh, learning music and also learning social social um abilities <laughs> well we like we like to we like to believe so we we like to believe that we are doing our best and and we are we are really you know promoting something we believe in um, and of course it's it's just as i always say it's just, we want to be this open door as i said like we want to be this this opening of a new world and then when you are in this new world, we want to help you develop and continue uh, growing. Uh, and it's it's all it's all about that. I think that I think that education in general, and even maybe formal, if we want to call it formal or academic education, mm -hmm. in some respects, is also moving towards this direction. Like I have met uh, professional musicians and uh, teachers in conservatoires that they also share the same, um, you know, awareness, let's say, and they are trying to integrate it into their practices. So I think that definitely the music world in regards to education is changing. It's just small change, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's go this way. Uh, did we forget to talk about something or? Um, or is there something you want to to say to to add? Because I think I I asked all my questions. <laughs> um, I think that I forgot something that is also very important, uh, which is also when we were talking about students and uh, how they how they co how they interact with each other and uh, the, the exchange of ideas. I think it's also very important to say that we have also seen changes in the families as well, little by little. These families that, of course, they let themselves be available and and, and, and they, they show themselves, let's say, <laughs> within the process. But we have also seen, um, we have also seen changes in the family. And I think one of our next steps is also understanding how we can include more the families in what we do. Of course, when we have concerts, when we have opportunities, we, we always, uh, work with the families and we do our best so, so that the families are in the concerts and are participating in our activities but I think that I think that at some point soon we will think about how to include the families more into what we do because then let's say that the contribution is greater to this to this change I think this is something also very important to say uh, at the end of the day, as I am sure that a lot of people think, uh, it all comes from it, it, it all comes from home. So we also want to support home, if possible. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it absolutely makes sense. Yeah, I think I I understood what you what you want to say. Yeah, great. Um, Thank you very, very much for taking the time and for telling us so much about this great and, and very interesting um, project that can be a role model also for projects here, I think. And um, yeah, I hope to someday uh, visit maybe the project or yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's again, it's my totally my pleasure to be here. I thank you very much for giving this space to share what we do and, and just, you know, 
I, I congratulate you and your team for what you're doing. I think it's a great initiative and it's part of the, of the change, let's say, of, of the change that we want. And I mean, I am, I am here, we are, I, have, I am bold enough to say that we are here as a project to as well support to whoever wants to start a project or whoever wants to, you know, just, uh, you know, understand what we do and what mistakes we have made so that they don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> we, we are here to support. Yeah, thank you very much.